Okay, welcome everyone. It's Chris and I want to thank you for coming by. We're going to have a really fun time today. We're going to do a beautiful inn, the Lamb Inn in Cotswold, England. Beautiful uh, inn in the countryside. So we're going to capture that stone, beautiful stone building feel. Lots of uh, colors, lots of variations. We're doing this on a la prima style, which means we're going to paint the darks first. And then we're going to do our middle tones and middle tonal values to uh, finish up uh, with the lighter uh, washes as well in the sky. <clears throat> so this is just a look at the painting uh, after we finish the video. So you're kind of seeing the end result of the painting, what it'll look like when we're done. You'll paint the same exact painting. I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step and we'll get it done. It'll look beautiful and you'll have yourself a nice painting. You can put a frame around it, nice white mat, cream color mat, you know. Do a nice frame around it, maybe a black frame, maybe a silver frame, whatever you frame you like to put around it. Take some of your paintings, put some mats on them and frame them. Have a great time with this, enjoy, and uh, we'll start the video in just a second. We'll do the drawing first and talk a little bit about the process as we're going to go through this. Okay, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Thanks for coming by. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to do a beautiful uh, pub in uh, England. We're going to do the uh, Lamb Inn in Cotswold, England. Uh, beautiful um, inn, very famous. It's in the countryside. Um, just gorgeous stonework and uh, beautiful scene. We'll, we'll do this. Um, you saw the finished painting, so now we're going to just go step by step to see how we got to this finish, the finished painting we just looked at right when we started this video. So the first thing we'll do is a preliminary sketch, which is a light sketch just to kind of get everything onto the paper where we want it just right with a very, very super light sketch, barely visible. You probably won't see it really too well. Then after that, we're going to do the contour drawing, which is going to be a darker pencil line over the top of our uh, preliminary sketch line, which is that super light sketch. And then once we're done with our contour drawing, which is our darker pencil line over the preliminary sketch, we'll start our painting. We'll have uh, a good time of this if we just take our time and use that process. It's a three-step process, preliminary sketch first, to make sure we get our, let's say our in, we want to get the in looking good, filling up the paper. And then second part is we want to um, go over the top of that with a good, strong, darker uh, contour uh, drawing with lines so that we, when we go into paint, we don't lose track of where our lines are. We have to have that guide to paint our painting. And then thirdly, we're going to paint the scene and we'll go through all the steps and we'll have a lot of fun going over how you can get some really gorgeous um, mixtures of colors pretty easily just using a simple method. I'll show you that method um, as we go when we get started with the painting, but let's get our preliminary sketch in first. So the first thing I'll do is um, I'm going to uh, use the uh, preliminary sketch idea. I'm going to sketch the sidewalk area first, which is just going to be about an inch up from the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go around this picture with a pencil line here. And I'm basically just riding the pencil along the interior of the uh, tape. So we put down some tape first, squ squared out our rectangle. We do that first. This way we have a nice border. 
a nice crisp white border around our painting once we're done when we peel off the tape. Secondly, it keeps the paper, our watercolor paper, down on the surface, the surface that we're working on so that it, when it does get buckled a little bit, let's say with a little bit of water on it or so forth, it will stay in place and it won't move around on us. And also, too, you always want to have your painting and your work areas night you know good and and solid we we don't want to ever have our work areas moving around so that when we're painting and we're drawing our work surface needs to be stable so you'll want to have your paper again taped down to your surface i'm working on top of a a mat board a white mat board i bought some white mat board to use for my youtube videos here and i put that down and i taped that down to my table and just, I guess, one bit of information might be helpful. Uh, there is a little bit of an incline on my table. So I might have about the thickness of a roll of tape like this underneath my board. So my board's at a, a, a it's tipped up on an angle going upwards with this tape underneath the board, uh, underneath the board over here. So if I put this underneath the board, this roll of about two inch tape gives me just enough angle so that when I'm painting the water will run down gently as we paint. Okay so we're going to start our preliminary sketch. Let's. I'm just going to go real lightly so I guess I don't know if you'll be able to see this too well but we'll go over um, the top of this once we once we get the preliminary sketch in and we have everything so we won't want to have it. Let's see, now we're going to do the building over here. And we can also use a ruler sometimes if you want to use a, a ruler just to maybe get a few sharp straight lines. You can do that. We'll do that here. And we'll do a chimney up here. And again, I'm just getting everything looking uh, good. So I'm looking at everything, looks pretty good. And again, I will go over with a darker. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, this is pretty much good now for the preliminary sketch. You probably can see it. It's, it's very uh, light, obviously. But we'll come back in just a minute and, and we'll finish up doing the uh, contour drawing over the top of this. And I might add a few more things. Uh, so we'll take a quick break and then we'll come right back and we'll finish up. We'll do our contour drawing over the top of this uh, preliminary sketch and then we'll get ready to paint. All right, our preliminary sketch is complete. I did add a few things while we were, were away. I didn't want to take too long uh, on this video, continuing to add in some details. We can do them now anyway. So I added in a few areas over here, like uh, there was a small uh, gable roof over here with a cool doorway and, some, and a window and a figure sitting down in the doorway. Uh, I added a few figures over here with a car, which was in the photograph too as well. Um, so we'll, we'll do our uh, contour drawing now, our line drawing. So when you're doing your contour drawing, you just start in one place and you just continue to draw through your, your drawing. You don't have to, let's say, go around the building like this and make like a, you know, house shape when in one um, well, line. You basically start anywhere and you just go from there and then you just if you see a line going this way this is the gutter over here for this roof so I'm gonna go over there then this peak of this gable roof over here I'm gonna do that over here there's another small gutter I'm gonna do that there then I'm gonna start over here and do this window And you'll see that I'm going carefully and uh, I will refer back I'm just using my if you need a photograph if you feel you want to look at a photograph all you have to do is uh, type into the internet the lamb in in Beaufort Cotswold England and you'll you'll find it um, there's, there's all there's all there's all kinds of great photographs you can use you could use different you can use a different view than I used I kind of took one view and turned it a little bit. I turned the building so that I didn't have to draw the angle on the right side of the building. I'd rather just do a more simplified drawing if I can at times versus using a lot of different angles. Um, so that's uh, sort of how I did it. And uh, I'm just going to keep going here again. Uh, I'm taking the um, approach that I'm not really so concerned with outlining things. I'm just trying to get the, the essence of what I'm drawing and just drawing around and having fun with my drawing. I think that's you can see this a little more now. I'm drawing these lines darker and normally I would draw probably this dark as well so but the preliminary sketch is not going to be dark because that's your first sketch where you're just sketching out your where things are going to be in your painting you want to give yourself the freedom to be able to maybe erase a little bit if you if you find you need to lay things out a little better maybe things aren't exact the way you want it therefore if you draw lightly on your preliminary sketch you can adjust your drawing a little bit and then and then you go in when you're done and go over with your darker darker pencil lines so here i'm going to go over here there's some there's a sign over here there's also some electrical lines on the sides of the building and there's this post here with the sign the pub sign so we'll do that and then here there's a there's a plant here and then so I'm just going to draw around here I'm doing the the bushes that are in these pots here and again, I'm just and then we have the window here. Then I might lightly sketch in these lines here. This is where you might 
just leave the light sketch lines for these window panes because we're going to want to paint these um, window panes white. So if you want to leave white window panes, then you wouldn't make dark pencil lines for your the panes of your window. We would want to leave those really super light pencil lines. Even erase a little bit if you have to, just so you can barely see the, the lines. And this way you can, we can do our negative shape painting, which we'll cover. So everyone here, if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know what negative shape painting is. If not, we'll cover it a little bit later when we start painting. And I'm just, again, doing my contour drawing. And here's the, the lamb in sign, like that. And there's another chimney over here. We'll do that here. And there's the corner of the building. And there's another flower pot over here with some bushes in there and some plants. And there's another, some trees over here. And then there's our sign, our lamb in sign. And we'll draw our lamb in there. So that's black wrought iron. So we could draw that in dark, that's no problem. Then we'll do our lamb shape here. Okay, that's our lamb that we have in the sign. And again, we have some bushes and trees over here so we'll let that be as it is and then we'll have our figures here let's draw them in so we have a man here and he's going to the pub here he's walking in and we have another a nice lady here she's maybe exiting the car here and going out and going into the pub as well or maybe to another some shopping along the uh, Avenue here, this street. And so we'll draw the car. And I just really get the car in real simply. We'll make it a darker car maybe, or maybe we'll make it white. I'm not sure yet. We'll kind of just... The picture is dark. But maybe we'll make it maybe a medium, like a medium blue or something. Or we'll work that out later when we're drawing, I mean painting. And then we have a little shadow there. So we have some shadow by our figures here. So you can see we have, everything seems to be looking pretty good. The rest will be sky washes, so we're not going to get too concerned with more of the sky wash. We might just make a little indications of a few cloud shapes we might want in there, like that. And if you see anything that looks a little bit off, no problem. You can erase a few lines here and there if you want, just to and I'm using a kneaded eraser. So it doesn't make too many crumbs. And we'll make uh, some darker shapes over here. So we'll have our figure here. He's on the stairs of this doorway just relaxing having a nice day and we got, there's the header over the door the door will be darker in here the doorway and this is a leader pipe going down from the gutter here into the pipe here like that and there's another line here maybe we'll make that like so And I might make some trim here on the I'll make some trim trim boards along the roof the the rake is the rake edges of the roof that's the rake trim wood trim there'll be a shadow under there as well so I'll just make a little shadow line to remember that I need to make a shadow there 
somewhat of a shadow. And uh, some shadowing under these uh, bands, decorative bands on the chimneys. I'll just put a little line there, remember, to put some shadow there. And then this two here, we have a little bit of shadowing underneath this uh, eave over here. And then we have a rake board on that gable too. And I think we're pretty good. We have everything. There's another planter here. All right, so once you have your contour drawing completed, as we just have here completed, good time to take a break, relax for 10, 15 minutes before you start to paint. Or if you even wanted to, you could draw this and then wait till the next day. And then you come back fresh the next day and you start your painting and you get prepped up and you look at everything. You look at your reference photos. You look at the colors. You might break this up into a couple days if you want. It depends on how much you paint. If you're painting all the time, you can, you know, usually uh, go right through this uh, painting with no problem if you're painting all the time. But if you're only painting once in a while, it's probably good to at least take a good break, you know, uh, at least an hour maybe, relax, and then come back and then try to work on the painting portion. Because you'll see next when we're doing our painting, I'm going to show you a method that really works great for colors to get some beautiful color in here, variations and uh, it'll help you out a lot, so I hope you'll try this next method. We're going to go over premixing our palette, so we'll talk about premixing our colors in our palette. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. I just want to mention, hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're creating paintings like this all the time here on this channel, and if you subscribe right below to the right-hand side of the screen here, the uh, red subscribe button as well as that notification bell, you click on all notifications. This way, whenever our videos come out, you'll always know uh, to check it out, see what's going on. If you like the painting and you want to try it, you're all set. You'll go in and work on it with us. And if you figure you don't like the painting this week or next week, you just skip a week or whatever and you come back. And we're doing something different all the time here. Always watercolor though. So this is your watercolor channel. You come here all the time for your watercolor information. And uh, you'll have a great time with us. And we'll see you in just a few minutes where we're going to start our painting. All right, we're starting up again here. We took a break. I took about 20 minutes, relaxed. Um, we're going to get started. Now we're going to talk about premixing colors in our palette. And you'll see me do this once in a while on my channel. Most times I'll work um, and just mix up my washes as I go. But in this painting, we want to get a lot of variation and a lot of interesting uh, color changes, so forth. So this is a perfect chance where we can use that method of just pre-mixing a lot of colors in our uh, paint box here and then when we go to start painting we don't have to keep mixing and taking paint and putting it down and we mix everything first and then we just work from our our pants here our individual uh, sections here of our paint box our palette so what I'll do is I'll look and I'll say to myself, what are going to be the colors? Maybe we'll do our dark colors over here on the right, since they're close right here anyway. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And we will continue to think about, we'll look at the photograph. <clears throat> There's a lot of stone. It's a stone building, so it's going to be those browns and golds. And then some warm and cool, so we'll have some blues in there too. So we're going to continue on with the idea that we have some darks over here. We'll mix in some uh, ultramarine violet. as well here and some blue but we want to kind of keep these darker colors over here then we'll start to go over to maybe some of the cobalt blue 
cerulean blue, maybe some Prussian blue, some green, birdie and green. So we'll have some greens over here. Sap green too. Olive green. And then over here maybe we'll, we'll do some really light alizarin crimson, rose matter, and some more, uh, maybe some yellow ochre. Okay, so this is pre-mixing. We get a whole variation of colors in our palette. And we're going to add to it as we work, but we get the basic idea of the colors we're going to be using here. Okay, so now let's start out with some of the darker darks. So I will start out with the Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue. Maybe we'll start out with some roofing, so we'll make some rough looking um, we'll make some lines on here. Now, I won't make every single shingle here like this, but I'll make a few shingles here and there like that. And then another line, a couple dashes, a couple dots. I make it look interesting. I don't go overboard with too many details. Here, same thing. I'll make some shingles. Then I'll maybe go in a straight line, skip a bit. And maybe I'll go in and get some French ultramarine blue, add a little bit to that. Again, as long as you have your colors already out there, you can add to them, and it's easy to add to them. You just look at it and go, I need more French ultramarine blue over here. Okay, there it is. Oh, I need some more burnt umber. There it is. And then your colors are already there, mixed ahead of time on the palette, and then you can just add to them. So you'll be using the same colors over and over. And then we'll make a shadow under here. And we'll do a couple of these here. Some, sh uh, some darker darks by the chimneys. So I'm going around and looking for where the darks that I can find. And then I'll mix some of that dark in with some green and blue. And maybe just add some color here and there. Just to make some different colors. Then I'll use some cobalt blue mixture. Maybe under here. So this will be the shadow. Then I'll add some So this is our shadow color, some purple in there too would look good. Cobalt blue. This is a number five, I think. Travel brush. And you can see I'm just Doing some shadowing here. A couple splashes. There's stonework everywhere, so. We could do a little stone color here, some gold. We can make them stone shapes, which are rectangular. So you can just take a little bit of your washes, make them lighter, and just start putting in some rectangular shapes any old way. doesn't have to be in any pattern or any type of rhyme or reason, just square shapes and you're all set.
squares and rectangles. And you can also mix it up and do some odd looking colors and shapes too. It doesn't have to be. You could do a round shape here and there. You can take some rose matter, put a little bit of red in there too. The key is having a lot of good variation of colors. We're using all the colors that we can. Maybe some cadmium lemon yellow. Burnt sienna. We'll do a little bit of a chimney. Burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of green mix in there. And then maybe some straight orange, cadmium orange, cadmium red. Straight cadmium red maybe. Let's make this colorful. Have a great time with your colors. Don't be afraid of the colors. Just have fun, enjoy them. This is the rake boards. <clears throat> so that's like a yellow ochre color, maybe. Just a real light yellow ochre, maybe. Barely touching the, like so. You can put in some more darker colors. That's burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of green mixed in there too. And again, we're doing our, I'm doing the darks that I see first. You can also work straight from your paints, that's fine too. And again, doing the same I did over there, cadmium red for the chimney pots there. Maybe some raw burnt sienna there. Maybe some green. And we can see where we're working our darker darks. That's our game plan. Start with our darks. This is the alla prima method that we talk about all the time. We start with the darks and we get those into the painting and then we keep working from there. So here I'm just going to mix uh, 
different greens. There's some trees over here. So I'll do some blue, some green. I'll splash some of that green color there just to give it some interesting leaf effects. Cadmium lemon yellow. With some shadows there underneath. Some darker darks here. We'll do some figure work here. So we got some blue jeans, maybe. If you go over any areas you think you have too much paint, you, you don't have to worry. You can always blot up a little bit of paint if you want here and there. If you feel you have too much, too many darks, you can always lift up a few as you're going. And here we're continuing on. We have some So then I rinse the brush and dry it off on a napkin or a paper towel or a tissue. And then I can get some dark hair there and let's do some dark hair over here too. So we'll do the female figure here. And maybe she'll have on a red coat maybe, let's see. right into the car. Let's work right into the car here so we'll make that some cobalt blue. Maybe some French ultramarine blue underneath here, darker dark for the blue under this section where the bumper is. And maybe some black for the bumper. And then the tires, they're going to be black too, so we'll put those here. And some cerulean blue, maybe some green, give it some variation. some red for the lights. Do some purple. A little bit of shadow in there.
burnt umber. There we go. And I paint around a little bit the uh, pants there a little bit and I splash a little more and maybe we'll have some green some like a green jacket mm, I don't want to go with green his maybe we'll go with a, a raw um, uh, raw umber maybe for his jacket here And then I dry off the brush on a tissue, rinse, dry off the brush. And this way I can just leave some lighter tone over there. The light's coming from the from this side. So we can remember that. We'll do our shadowing. Just do a little bit of shadowing. Okay, let's take a break. We've done quite a bit already. We've gotten a lot of darks in. We still have quite a few darks to go into the painting. And then once those are all in, I think we'll be fine. We'll, we'll be able to kind of finish up pretty quickly. But the, the darks take a little bit of time to do because you're kind of focusing on uh, making sure you get really a lot of straight paint and not much water at all. So you can notice that I'm, I'm constantly rinsing my brush off, drying it off on my apron or on my tissue, and then getting straight paint pretty much to get all these darks. I haven't used much water at all so far in the painting, so you'll notice that. That's real important to kind of key in on when we're uh, painting this style of a la prima. You're going to get your darks in first using pretty much straight moist paint right from the palette. It's got to be fresh and moist and wet like this and juicy. And then you get it right onto the paper. It looks good, fresh. And then once we start getting into more of the lighter tonal values, which we did a few here, in there, but mostly darks we're doing. And then once you'll see, once we get into the lighter tonal values, it'll go quicker and we'll use a larger brush. But for this first set part of the painting, you're going to use a smaller brush like this, a five or a six with a good point. And you're just using basically straight paint. And then you remember we mixed up the paint first, got our colors out onto the palette, and then we just added to them if we needed to. And But it's this way it's out there and you can kind of see it. And you just fill back in what you need uh, with your paints onto your palette as you go. All right, so let's take another break. We've done quite a bit. Let's take a break, five, ten minutes, and we'll come back. All right, so we're getting back into things here. We're going to continue with our darks as we go. I'm just pressing down some of my black. I had to refill my black... Um, wells here. I just have a small uh, pan with a small divider in there for my uh, Payne's Gray and uh, Ivory Black. And the rest of the colors seem to be pretty good. We'll keep working and I'll maybe spritz a little bit. We're still going with the darks. Uh, let's get some burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Burnt sienna, raw umber. Let's 
let's get some of that dark here. This is the dark roof over here. And I'll mix in some burnt sienna there. Maybe some blue as well. It's a little bit light, <clears throat> lighter in tonal value. This uh, part of the roof here on the uh, gable. And some ivory black for the gutters here. I'll just try to mix up some of these colors just to make a, a grayish color a little bit lighter. good. And we continue with our darks. in some blue with that too, maybe some green. And again, that grayish mixture, a little bit of more ivory black. Maybe some blue in there. Continue to work on the darks. And we can do some more darks around these windows here.
And then maybe we'll start putting in the panes of the windows here. I will mix up my I'll do some like so. I'll just mix and match. I'll do some dark squares over here. Then I'll mix up uh, some reds over here. Some greens too. So we'll start mixing up some of these. And the main idea here is to get some good variation, darks, lights, different colors. It's easy just to go in there and start putting in the same color uh, over and over and over again. So we'll just try to variate, uh, just make variations in all the colors and tonal values. Some lights. like this, some gold, orangey kind of colors, those work good too. Go. Then I would Maybe splash a little bit in there just to that looks pretty good. Then maybe up here we'll do these other window panes, these might be a little darker. There we go. A little bit of splashing just to and then usually you have a shadow underneath here.
And again, just mixing up some different colors here, stonework. Mostly squ squares and rectangles. And some gray, uh, gray mixtures in there. And you can take some, have some areas of uh, just plain white wall, almost like a restful type places here and there on the wall where there's no stone shapes, let's say. And we can work on some Some shadowing on the bushes here with a little bit of blue. And if we want to put a little bit of light on these barrels here, these uh, planters, we just lift up a little bit. Okay, more shadows.
And we just continue to work our stone shapes in there and we'll mix up colors. Okay, you can see it's really coming along. We're uh, we've got our our goal of getting our darks in, and we'll do some more window windows here. It's more of a raw umber. Okay, we're going to take a break here. We've done a lot of work so far. And we're getting there. Some of the lighter washes will be... Uh, quicker and, and a little more fun. Not fun, but just quicker and, and more enjoyable because we know we're toward the finishing up of the painting. Everything will come together looking really good with the sky wash in there. So let's just uh, take another quick break. We've been painting probably 15-20 minutes. Uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we'll sort of get our last bit of middle tones and then um, we'll get our light washes of the sky in and maybe a little bit of lighter washes on the road here. Okay, this is a bit of a marathon. It takes a while to paint this. <laughs> it's definitely time consuming to get all those darks in first like we did. And uh, as you can see, uh, we've been patient here. We've taken our time. And always remember too, when you're doing your paintings, always just keep painting and painting it all the way through to the finish. Uh, and, and then you can look at it from that point. After it dries and you finished it 100% of the way, then you can make, uh, you know, a judgment on whether you, you want to go in and do a few more details, maybe not. I say under finish it a little bit each time when you're painting. With your paintings, you know, under finish a little bit and then you can always add some details to it. So I think we're really doing pretty well here. We've got almost everything in. We'll do a few more um, details. Let's start, um, maybe we'll do the sky washes. So I'll, I'll up my brush size a little bit. I'll, I'll go to a, a Raphael 8. And then what I'll do is um, I'll wet the paper a little bit. And I'll carefully wet around the chimney area so that I don't go over that. So when you wet, damp, when you dampen the paper around an object, whatever it is, on a roof, maybe if it's a chimney or um, anything else you're painting, if you go around it with a little damp water first and stay away from the actual object with the paint on there, then when you go to paint your wet wash, it'll, it won't infiltrate into your paint and start to uh, reactivate and maybe make some unpleasant looking uh, 
uh, marks on the paper. So just to keep that in mind, again, I'm wetting the paper, dampening the paper, I should say, not really using too much water, but, and again, I'm doing the same thing here at the roof. I'm staying just a little bit away from the roof shingles so that we don't put a lot of, flood a lot of water onto the roof shingles so we don't disturb that edge. So that's why we're dampening the paper here around these areas. Same thing here, I'm going around the chimney and the roof tiles, staying away from that a little bit with the damp brush. Then over here, a little more damp brush there. And the same thing over here, I'm going to go around this chimney, very carefully staying away just a little bit. You can see my brush is just about touching the chimney pots and the chimney itself. And that will really help us a lot to uh, keep from disturbing that paint. Now for our sky, let's go with some Cobalt blue. And then with that cobalt blue, I'll add a little raw sienna just to Gray it down a tiny bit. Same thing over here, maybe some cerulean blue there. Try to mix, mix the uh, washes around a little bit. Maybe over here some more raw sienna. Cobalt blue, cerulean blue. I, I would tend to, I would tend to say it's good to mix. different uh, blues together when you're going to mix the uh, sky colors. Cobalt, cerulean blue, a little bit of French ultramarine blue. You can take a, a tissue a little bit and just do a little bit of blotting up if you want. Some more cerulean maybe here. I might go up a little bit higher. Up here with some cerulean. Maybe a little bit of purple in there. And then I mix that down a little bit. For some reason you feel you've added too much paint or wash you can just lift up a little bit again dab up with the tissue and then here I'm going to go around the uh, lamb sign here with some blue so that we have that So with this here, the lamb sign, I just went a little darker with the sky. The 
So we get that look of the, the lamb on that sign. That looks good. And uh, look over here. I'll make this a little darker. Couple more splashes. A little bit of cerulean blue on the sidewalks here with a little bit of yellow ochre too as well. Maybe a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson as well. Okay, so I think we're pretty good here. We're going to a little bit of sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Maybe we can just add in a little bit of some darks there, and then we'll use our smaller brush. pretty good and then maybe we'll do a little figure work here cadmium red and sienna maybe we'll do some blue jeans here A little bit of the dark here, straight paint, basically straight paint. Maybe he's got a red shirt on. And some raw umber for the hat, maybe. A little shadow under the, the hat. And a little bit of a shadow underneath here.
Okay, so we have some figures now in our painting. We got our figures in here. Everything looks pretty good. And again, I always say, try to do less. And then if you want to go in and do more, you can do that once it dries. Maybe you give it some time to look, to look at it and see if you want to add more. Uh, more details. I think we just have to add the uh, we'll add some of this signage here. Okay, the, the paper's a little damp, so I don't I don't want to go in and do any more details until I definitely know everything's dry. So we're gonna take another break um, for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll come back and just do the final details of these rail, wrought iron railings and support brackets uh, for this sign over here, the uh, lamb in sign. And we'll also maybe draw in the lamb in on this sign here up on this uh, placard up here on the wall. And I think we should be good at that point. All right, welcome back. We're finishing up here on the t finishing touches of our painting. Um, hope you really enjoyed this video as we went along. We went, covered all the techniques, all the methods on how to do a la prima painting here, slowly building up with the darks first, and of course then going on to the middle uh, tonal values, and then uh, finishing up with our uh, light washes of the sky in the uh, foreground here on the sidewalk. Uh, perfect time. If you haven't subscribed again, please, I always say, uh, you know, feel free to subscribe. You'll get great videos like this week after week. We're doing all kinds of different subject matter, everything watercolor. So this week we're going to do a pub. Next week we might do flowers. The week after, maybe a boat painting or uh, a seascape. Um, so we're always doing different subject matter, but everything watercolor. And you can just come along and watch. If you don't really feel like painting it, you can always watch and go over again all the details that we cover, which are basic fundamentals of watercolor. So you get all that great information week after week as we paint, draw and paint here on this channel. So please, again, uh, think about subscribing if you haven't. And we're gonna go and do our final touches here. Um, we're gonna use a needlepoint brush and some burnt umber and French ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna as well. Mix up a really rich dark here. Um, load up our brush, our needlepoint brush, and then we're going to paint the sign in. And the, what we're going to do here is I blocked out, as you can see, each each square in this uh, sign represents the uh, each letter that we have to uh, paint in. So we're going to carefully use those boxes to uh, make sure we get our uh, lettering just right, the best that we can. So the first is a T, an E, Okay, now people that know this place, they will, they will tend to already know by looking at the building what it is, where it is, so I'm not going to This will
Now, I would say this is, I'm happy with this, with the sign. I don't think it has to be perfect, uh, you know. You could go in with some white paint, some uh, titanium white, and maybe uh, But I think that's okay for now. So we have that completed and then we wanted to do our raw iron and that is uh, ivory black. And then we just go across here like so. And we might need a little bit of water. And I'm just going to carefully make that wrought iron around the lamb side here. I think that's good. We'll maybe, I might take a little bit of cerulean blue and I'll just go around the, the lamb one more, more, one more time like that. And I'm just making some uh, cloud type shapes here. Okay, so I think that's perfect. I think we have everything uh, completed. Again, we can always sit back and wait a day or two and then see if we want to add just a few more details if we think that's, you know, will make the painting a little better. But I think it looks pretty good the way it is. I, th I see a few things I'm going to, would touch up a little, you know, once we're, maybe tomorrow or the next day I'll, I'll touch up a few things. But for the most part, it looks good. And we'll peel off the tape. This is Arch's rough paper we're using today. Fabriano would work great. Buckingford works excellent. Uh, Fabriano uh, student grade paper would work excellent as well. Uh, there's also some good papers. Um, trying to pick a few more that are pretty, pretty good. Uh, Canson. Sketchbook paper works pretty good. The uh, sketchbook paper works really nice. The Canson. Okay, and then we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit. All right, so that's uh, the finished painting, and I'll even zoom in some more. If you want to paint from that, you can do that. And then we can zoom in. That's the roof areas.
and then the lower section. Okay, thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you on the next video.